Less than a year ago, this Mustang was running wild in Wyoming. Today, Katie Morris has Prince Caspian doing things that wild horses just shouldn't do. Katie's considered one of the best Mustang trainers in the country. When I got him, he was completely wild, and I had a 90 days, about 90 days, give or take, to gentle him and compete against other trainers who got their horses at the same time. Katie's job is to tame them, okay. and she has an uncanny ability to do that. Her Mustang, Toby, will even take a bow to let her jump on. Since each horse is different, Katie modifies her training based on their personalities. What is it about you and your methods that you can make a wild horse this tame? Well, I don't think I can say for sure, but I think it has a lot to do with trust. It takes a lot of trust for a completely wild animal to do the things that they do for me and, and be gentled and all that. And even just to stand here and, and have humans on either side of him is a big deal. It takes a lot of trust. I think that everyone has a God-given talent, and I think that's probably mine. Tell us about Prince Caspian's haircut here. Uh, well, I saw someone online do this. In the winter, he turns brown because he's a roan, and when he sheds out in summer, he's almost completely white. So whenever I shaved him, his undercoat is white, and it left stripes. <laughs> so how did wild mustangs from the Midwest end up on this farm in Lithia? The Bureau of Land Management removes the horses from public lands to ensure their survival. There's an overpopulation issue. Uh, there's cattle ranchers who have their cattle on that land, so there's not enough food for these mustangs. And also there's not enough predators for them anymore, so there's nothing to keep their population in check. So what the BLM does is they go out and they do roundups where they take a bunch in and they put them in temporary holding facilities and get them adopted out. Obviously, Katie's found a winning formula with her training methods. Getting any horse to do this takes patience and understanding. She first competed in a Mustang makeover competition in Ocala, where she won the youth division. She followed that up with another win when she turned 18 last year and moved up to the adult division, beating 50 other trainers. What's it like for you to watch your daughter transforming these huge animals? It's pretty amazing. I get kind of proud, yeah. <laughs> you should be. Yeah. Were you nervous at first when you saw her competing? At first, I'm always nervous when she's competing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Destiny here? She is more than a one-trick pony, aren't you? You've got a lot of tricks up your sleeve. She wasn't an easy horse to tame, but now she's eating out of Katie's hand, literally and figuratively. It's not every day you see a horse take a seat on a couch, but Destiny is happy to do it for Katie. Describe her personality for us. Uh, she's very silly and bouncy and playful and energetic, though she's been a little lazy today. <laughs> Katie has such a connection with her Mustangs, she rides them without a saddle or even reins. Are you going to take on more Mustangs, do you think, or is this it? Uh, I will probably take on more for competitions, and if I have anyone interested in me taming one for them and helping them, because I know some people can't do it on their own, um, I would do that, but I'm not looking to get any more personal Mustangs. I have, I have plenty. Apart from working with her own Mustangs, Katie is now using her skills to help other owners. I'm now working with other people's horses with a variety of issues and helping them get to where they have a better relationship with their horses. Ever met a horse that you thought cannot be trained or can't be helped? Not yet. <laughs>